Okay, I just want to do a recap of yesterday. So if you recall, um, two nights ago, 10.30 at night, our uh, team got the call that uh, people from the camps had uh, been at an iftar. They were breaking their fast for the day, uh, and a, a um, volunteer organization had made the food, uh, it made it in the morning, delivered it at 5. It was eaten after sundown. And within a half hour, hundreds of people were throwing up, really sick. The Peshmerga, the military, quickly hauled people to the clinic. And so most of our team went out that night. They arrived at the clinic. Um, and if you remember, I showed you pictures of the clinic. It's that container that has room for maybe three stations and a table. Well, that wasn't going to contain 200 people. Um, and so tarps were on the ground, and people were treated all night over uh, laying on the ground with their IVs getting their fluids uh, and, and meds and uh, and our team came back got back to here at 3 in the morning the very next morning those who hadn't gone including myself went early went to the clinic the, as soon as we walked in the clinic one third of the office was gone because it was full of supplies and uh, people rushed to tell us that um, there was a, were a meeting at the clinic. They had taken a distribution tent um, to treat the, uh, the patients. By that time, there were 800 patients. Uh, the night before, when the people on our team arrived, they told me that three people had, three children had died. When I got to the camp in the morning yesterday, I was told that 11 people had died. The newspapers, I think, all over the world were reporting that two children had died. So listen to me very, very carefully. Nobody died. Nobody. Um, and it, it, you know, everybody that's watching this has probably been food poisoned at one time. You might wish you had died, but you didn't. Now, these people were vulnerable because you know they were in a city that um, they couldn't get out of, and they were having no food come in, and they were super malnourished. And so that was a real concern, plus the high, high heat, plus it was Ramadan. They were very vulnerable, but nobody died. Anyway, so we go to the distribution tent yesterday, and there are hundreds and hundreds of people on the on the floors uh, getting their IVs, um, and there's four rows of people, and uh, people are crying and turning colors and, you know, their stomachs, and it was just really, really bad. And so our doctors were the first doctors there, and they jumped into action, and uh, first they had to go through and figure out who needs to be treated first. Um, I went through and, and collected data with an interpreter, which took most of the morning. It really was a, a hard task uh, because it was so loud. And um, it was a useful task because people felt like, well, they were talking to us. They were part of the process. They were getting attended to. Um, they're feeling better and calming down. And I'm thinking, ah, the Hawthorne effect. My industrial psychology comes through. Um, and then other uh, NGOs start arriving with uh, medical teams. Um, and so you'll see the World Health Organization and UNICEF and uh, the, um, the, the Red Crescent of, of uh, Iraq and Kurdistan and just so many different agencies. Uh, the press arrived with the, their TV cameras. The politicians arrived. Uh, but the Peshmerga were there too. And I remember I, I was walking backwards to get away from a crowd a little bit. And all of a sudden I felt this thing in my back, and it was a semi-automatic rifle from one of the Peshmergas. And I mean, he wasn't trying to shoot me or anything. I just walked into his gun, which is something I don't ever want to do again. Anyway, so it was really intense. Uh, first of all, people were there because they had diarrhea and vomiting. And it, as hot as it was outside, it was far hotter in the tent. And so you have the stifling heat with only occasional breeze and the air was oppressive and um, odiferous, okay? And then people were moaning, and it was, it was just really difficult. People were worried about their children, and the children um, really did look delicate. <clears throat> the doctors were very focused, and yet I was aware of just how compassionate they were. So that was uh, <clears throat> our day, um, and it was pretty intense. And then I, we get back here, and there's a knock on the door, and um, our, our builder shows up. It's this Australian guy who goes around the world working for 
uh, NGOs and, and being very creative and using his, his Bob the Builder type skills. Uh, and his name is Dylan, which is kind of cool. He's got his Australian accent and his manly work pants, and he's really, he's like the dude. He's really cool. Um, anyway, so he's here. He arrived from Ireland. Uh, he had worked in the jungle in France, the, the big illegal camp. Uh, he was the cook there. Uh, and Serbia, because Serbia is like the new um, border that's a little more porous than all the other borders, and so they know that there's going to be large numbers of refugees coming in there this summer. Uh, he made the distribution center so that all the NGOs could work together and make sure that everybody gets something as opposed to just the ones who are the loudest get something. And uh, so he's here because he's going to finish up our hospital. Our hospital <clears throat> is supposed to be done in two weeks. Well, because of everything that's happened, the rush is to get it done this week. The generators arrived today. Uh, the paperwork is finally signed, so all the equipment that's at the border and hasn't been allowed in is going to be allowed in. Um, the containers that are going to be the outside offices arrive Thursday, tomorrow. And so what that means is that um, the, the psych clinic opens Thursday. I'll be the first um, mental health person to, to use it, um, which is pretty exciting. So... My plans every day are really clear and then really change. And so yesterday I was supposed to do tent visits and that just never happened. There was, that was impossible. So today I was supposed to do tent um, visits. But once it was clear that the, there was going to be a clinic in two days, <clears throat> instead my, go, my plan today, hence the colorful shirt that wouldn't necessarily be appropriate for a, a, refugee, or a refugee camp, an IDP camp, internally displaced persons camp, um, I can wear this because I'm going to the office all day and I'll be working on writing protocols up for mental health people to use so that we have consistency uh, that will then be approved by this Australian psychologist who will be here um, like every six weeks. She's the, the anchor and by all accounts really, really good. Um, but I'll be developing that, uh, archives for, for training. Um, and how we can integrate with um, another organism, another NGO. And so that's actually really, really pretty cool. They'll have a, a lasting effect. And then, um, and then Thursday, uh, I'll be out doing the, the tent visits. Uh, now, last night, uh, they were going out to the grocery store, and I said, hey, can I go? And it was out in Herbal. And this is the first time I've actually been in the city. Um, Italian village is kind of suburbia walled suburbia and so we go into the christian quarter and uh and so well um michael's out getting shawarma for us and stuff uh, dylan and i go walking through the markets which were a lot of fun dylan wants to buy baggy pants so i'm gonna come home with some baggy pants too so that'll be cool because um, you know it's hammer time um anyway so um this is the christian quarter and the reputation is that, you know, this is the quarter where the, the laws are lax in terms of alcohol. And so this is the place you'd go if you, if you had a night in town and wanted to do some uh, maybe uh, less flavorful things, right? Uh, it's kind of the saucy neighborhood of the city. Uh, and so that's kind of strange, I think, for me to think of it as the Christian neighborhood is the naughty neighborhood, you know. Um, and, and I don't think this says anything about Christianity at all. It says everything about just social norms and rules. Anyway, and so last night we had this meal with everybody. It was just lots and lots of fun. Um, and people were going through all the news and seeing all the things, how the story had been covered all over the world. How uh, one country uh, considers it an act of Kuwaiti, not Kuwaiti, um, um, Qatari, um, terrorism. Uh, well, others see it as, oh my God, this is a charity that just really blew it. Um, and um, so we were watching the story unravel. And um, there's a part of me that wants to write the Journal Gazette and say, no, it wasn't like that at all. And there's another part of me that says, it's really important here. I don't think it's really important in Fort Wayne. Anyway, so that was the, that was the day. Um, today will be very different. Uh, and um, today, 
will be the beginning of, of the end of the prep for the hospital and the beginning of the opening of the hospital. So it's very, very exciting uh, work to be done here. Uh, Dylan has contacts all over Kurdistan. He had worked here before, and so he knows people in the building industry and knows people in the Peshmerga, and just all over the place. He's really well connected. Um, and he's such a planner and, and he knows materials and so it, that'll be exciting. Um, we have a new nurse here from Oklahoma and so we're all kind of going, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. As you can tell, I've got some sleep so I'm a little more rested to feel better. Um, that's it. The, the work continues to be really, really difficult um, but really sustained for our two reasons. One is our team is just a wonderful team. Uh, but the other part is um, it's making a difference, and you, and you can see it, you can feel it, and, and you got to feel good about that. So that's all for now. Take care. Bye.